<laughs> Who's driving? Good afternoon. For those of you guys that pointed out I had a trailer light out the other day, I had two of them, in fact, out. This outside blinker um, tail light, yada yada, and the center one there. Taylor actually got her hand in the middle on that one and plugged her back in, but they were just both unplugged. Also, everybody wanted to know why I don't just tow with a 3500 full time. Uh, I'll go into that in a second, but for right now, we're getting the prime Larry ready to go. Put a new shock up there, but it needs a stopper. The old one broke off right here, so I'm trying to, and I'm trying to come up with a little something, something, a little something, something. Then we'll load up and haul off to the job tonight for tomorrow's operation. All right, got the bird all loaded up. Got the big bird on the back. Got a couple kinks worked out on the old prime tank. Change the oil on it. We're supposed to have snow today. I cleaned the 08 up all a bunch so that I could take these tires and wheels off and go get those Alcoas put on it, but weather cleared up, so back to work. bird now for those of you that showed interest in me continuing to tow full time with my new truck that old ram 3500 compared to staying with this 3500 is a great truck really like it this thing has uh, several different reasons why that I would like to keep this thing as the 100% dedicated tow rig. First thing off the bat, it's not about the money. The new truck has a lot of money in the initial purchase of it. This truck, I, I'm gonna say I have more invested in this truck. New truck, Quite a bit nicer, cleaner. This thing's got 56,000 miles on it and is a dedicated tow rig. Biggest thing that I like about this, I've said many times, one of the main things that holds back the 3500 is the brakes. Not engine brakes, but service brakes. This thing's got quite a bit bigger discs on it and it, uh, it'll stop this setup pretty confidently on flat ground for sure, just with the service brakes. Now, I know a lot of people like to critique me on the idea that I just, I'm pouring energy and money into this truck so that it'll go faster, have more power. That's all good. But they like to skip the step where I engine brake, exhaust brake, run them both, critiquing, you know, failures and mistakes and errors in some of the systems and some of the platforms that are running right now i have two sets of pack brakes on this truck compared to just a vgt exhaust brake on the 3500 this thing's kind of pulling away a little bit with the setup i have on right now but i have confidence in the bigger brakes on this truck for when it comes to it and the brakes on the trailer pretty solid this whole time i've been going down a hill Touch your brakes twice. Go ahead and ease off on them. But there's a couple other reasons why I like to tow with this one a lot better. The visibility out of this truck, it's a third gen. The hood, it's not so much as a deck, it's kind of tapers off 
quicker. I can see out the front a lot better. The flatbed, probably one of the bigger perks of this rig. I can see all kinds of stuff back there. Now, 5500 doesn't do a very good job as a daily driver. I, I, you know, this truck's great to drive when it's got a little bit of load on it. Even with that uh, mill machine or uh, lathe that was hauling the other day, not quite enough weight to really make this thing cushionable. Probably takes about two tons on the back of this truck to make it, you know, a smooth ride. Even then, it's still riding. You can tell what truck it is. 3500 with those airbags was a big perk. Like that a lot. But doesn't quite get us here. about the 3500 versus this truck this truck i don't know maybe when it dynos it's going to have more power i can say that much but usable power uh is a little bit different than you know whatever you drop on the dyno but like this truck sure you might be able to hit some big numbers it's not really usable power i run this thing on level two efi live i got three more tunes significant jump in power i know it i can feel it but I don't need that power up there. It's not good for anything. It's not helping it out. But the big perk about that 3500, it's got good usable power all the time. This doesn't need to be monitored by me. The engineers and stuff at Cummins, I assume took responsibility in making sure that thing's got certain regulations it follows. And so far, I haven't seen hardly any spike on engine temp transmission temp going up the big hill yeah obviously but for the most part you don't got no egt's to worry about you know i have no boost gauge to worry about some say vgt gets some weird back pressure going on pop a head gasket on a stock rig that's scary but for the most part guys are running these day in and day out that trip i made the other day getting the lathe that was counting the hot shot rigs i didn't see any chevys but out of all the all the hot shotters, they were all Dodges except for one guy. So, through the they're all running these trucks and going through scales and stuff. I'm sure all of them are running a stock truck. This thing is not stock anymore, it pulls, it rips. 2008, this thing didn't have a lot of juice for being a captain chassis truck. 2019, now this truck kind of gets up and goes, and so does every other stock truck on the road. But this is another perk I like right here. This is where the flatbed really shines. Because this little spot is going to be tricky when it comes up into here. I got to turn around in some tight spots on most every job I'm on, and they're never level surface. Level surface is the absolute last thing that I really find on a good turnaround spot. So I'm going to zigzag up here to this end of this road and that 3500 as nice of a truck as that is very functional truck but it's got the dually fenders on it that thing hurts your visibility onto a different complete level it is something bad it's very i mean you can work with it but it's still not awesome so we're gonna pull up here and unload this, Larry. And then I'll show you a couple more ideas that I have and my reasoning behind why this truck is more suited for what I'm doing. Both great trucks. They have, they're outstanding to be honest with you. Stick shift automatic. Stick shift is still, still a lot of fun to drive. Well, I'm going to go ahead and unload this machine and then I'll show you guys what I mean up here. Get down, dog. Get off the truck. Bad dog. Bad dog. Stay off the truck. That's a bad putty. 
too bad, buddy. Damn dogs came and jumped on my truck. There's another dog up there. Hope they don't attack the truck. I just cleaned it. God dang it. All right. So this little spot's not as bad, but it's still prone to the idea that I don't like when I'm towing with the new truck. When I tow with the new one, I don't uh, I don't take it to a spot that I don't know. Put it that way, because it's not as versatile as this truck. And I'll show you why right here. See if I can get it in position for you guys. Okay, so the point I want to make right here is turning around is made a lot easier with this truck because, like I said, all turnaround spots most of the time are uneven surfaces. You can kind of see the trailer dip down right there. This spot isn't really bad, but it always gives me the idea. When I'm turning around a regular pickup bed with a gooseneck, I just would hate to fall into that category of somebody that's, you know, met gooseneck to bed rail. And yeah, I don't want that. Well, shoot, nobody wants that. But with the flatbed, I don't have to worry about that. And this truck is just, it's more suited for this application. And the idea of that flatbed is very beneficial just in the clearance aspect, not only the visibility end. I don't know how well you guys would be able to tell if that was a steep at all or much. But the problem that I run into with running a pickup bed, clearance. Don't have much clearance at all. No matter what position the trailer's in, if you're jackknifed or whatever, there's like maybe eight inches. Granted, that takes a long ways to get that space to be taken up, but uh, I don't have to worry about that at all with this truck. It is nice. That is a big comfort to not think about. Uh, one, it's just one of those things. It, if it's not something you need to worry about that's something else something else off the checklist get some pretty tight spots Let's see if we can get her out of here Another thing guys were pointing out with the, the new truck is you know something that they didn't like is the automatic wasn't downshifting early enough I got a butt for that I can take care of that I can downshift it whenever I want I can keep it in manual mode and it stays in that gear but I get to pick what gear I'm in with this truck think too much about it but that trailer weighs 8,500 pounds it's behind the truck that's a big bit of dead weight in pulling that's for dang sure back of the house we'll go down the list and break it down for you individual reasons why I prefer towing with this truck rather than the new bird first things first it's very obvious is the flatbed how versatile it is and how much the visibility is uh, greatly improved not having those big dually fenders on it hopefully you guys can see that I'll try to aim it up but I can see pretty much the whole deck space of the trailer uh, through the mirror I can handle it just fine with the dually fenders, but I mean, that's a pretty big advantage right there, having your visibility. I 
I got a barrel back there that I bump with the back of the trailer. It can't hurt anything. But it's so muddy right here where I parked the truck because I guess the rainwater runs off the gravel part of the driveway and it lands right here and yeah. No traction, so the truck started going a little bit sideways before I could actually get to my destination. But let's see here. What have I said so far? The flatbed. The visibility factor is absolutely huge and very beneficial. Then it comes to just the maneuverability of the flatbed. I can really get this trailer into some bad spots, tilt it off the side of the truck, and not have to worry about it kissing the, um, kissing the side rails of the bed. 3,500, yeah. There's not a lot of give room in there when it gets into a bad spot. You always wish you had a little bit more room. Then the stick shift. Uh, man, it's contradicting every time because I love stick shift. Everybody likes driving a stick shift. But when it comes to a new truck, man, those things, they tow so much better with an automatic. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that Dodge really kind of planned on it. They, they just had the idea, let's have high output trucks forever with a stick shift. Automatics are always derated, but then they switched it around. I think they did that just to get away from the stick shift. Uh, it makes sense, you know, derate everything until people stop buying it and then discontinue it and just stick with the automatic and move forward. That's, uh, I don't know, that's just an idea I have. But the stick shift is nice because I got my gear. That's what gear I pick. Taking off on hills, uh, it's not really that big a deal. I got the lower gears, so that works. Somehow, if you could have the best of both worlds, uh, ISN, I, I think it's getting kind of close. Apparently, they're going to have a uh, more gears in their next generation of truck. Not the new 5th gen, but the 5th gen and a half, or whatever you will call it. But this thing is just... The brakes are so much better. The turning radius, that's one thing I always forget to mention. The turning radius on a 55, I'm sure a 45 is the same, but I can turn so much sharper with this truck that it's... Uh, the maneuverability is so much better with this rig. Uh, it's just, I think the wheelbase is just a touch longer than a 3500, but nevertheless, every little bit of those all add up to something, make it more, more of a tow rig, and like if a dog would have, like that pup, uh, misbehaving pup, if that would have jumped up on uh, my new truck, oh man, uh, yeah, that wouldn't have been good, this truck, pisses me off that the dog jumped up on the truck but it's not quite as big of a deal uh it did kind of suck because i literally did just spend like an hour washing this truck but i got all the parts for the alcoa so let's stop talking and end this video but the 5500 just all around sturdy feeling of the suspension better turning radius uh the horsepower i'm gonna say it's it's pretty good in there too this rig gets it done but stick shift turning radius better brakes Better engine brake setup on this thing. It's a hard toss, but that 3500 sure is sweet. But we're going to end this video here. I hope you guys didn't mind my rambling and uh, my toss around video. But that's what we had for activity tonight. I still have to hop in my 04 and hook up the little gooseneck because i got to take the little excavator to that job tomorrow. And I might have to go fill up the transfer for it. And we might go work on the Mustang a little bit more tonight. It is only 6 o'clock right now, so we got plenty of... Uh, afternoon to spare but we don't have any more daylight to spare summer's coming hope you guys enjoyed the rambles yet again thanks for watching hit that buttons like comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time thanks guys bye